of no confirmation battle. As you may remember, in their efforts to stop his ascent to the Supreme Court, the press spent weeks trying to destroy his life, his family's life, and they did, did it based on virtually no evidence. Every day you'd tune in, and some channel, usually it was MSNBC or CNN, would be airing some lunatic claim like this one. I've never heard of a guy who's a one-time rapist. I've never heard of a guy who's a one-time sexual assaulter. I grew up with guys like this. He's from around this area, right? He's the fifth guy in a gang rape. It has amazed me that we have an administration that out of the millions of people who are qualified in this country of all races and genders, they consistently find men who beat, abuse, and sexually assault women. Imagine calling someone a rapist on TV with no evidence whatsoever. And as the evidence is serially discredited day after day after day, you keep doing it because you don't care what the truth is, and they don't. And it's even more obvious now just how cynical and disingenuous all of that was. How do we know? Because former Joe Biden aide Tara Reid claims that Joe Biden sexually assaulted her. Not, some, not said something naughty to her, but actually sexually assaulted her. Did he do that? We have no idea. And before I believe it, I want to hear his side and weigh all the evidence. The interesting thing is the press is using a completely different standard. Instead of choosing to believe all women, they've essentially ignored this woman's claims or showed profound skepticism they never even considered granting to Brett Kavanaugh. What is this? Molly Hemingway is a senior editor at The Federalist, author of Justice on Trial, The Kavanaugh Confirmation, The Future of the Supreme Court, the perfect person to assess what we're watching now. Molly, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. What are we watching now? Well... It is so beyond clear that the Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, and many other media outlets owe Justice Brett Kavanaugh their deepest apologies for how they handled allegations against him. As you note, there was no evidence in support of these allegations. In one case, you know, the major, the major claim made by Christine Blasey Ford, there's no evidence she ever met Brett Kavanaugh, much less that any assault of the type she described happened. There are her four witnesses all strongly refuted or you know, had no recollection of what she claimed happened. She didn't have any memory of location, how she got to the event, how she got home, um, you know, what, what year it happened. There were so many problems with her story. And when, when she made her claim, the Washington Post and many other media outlets did their very, very best to make it seem like her allegations had more to them than they did. And they continue to do that day after day, week after week, in an attempt to destroy not just Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court, but to destroy his life, to destroy his family, his reputation. And you compare that with this Joe Biden situation where the woman making the accusation, nobody denies that she worked for him, that she knew him. Nobody denies that she told people at the time of the alleged event. And how that story is being rolled out is to ignore it for 19 days um, in, and to do their very best, not to lay out in sympathetic fashion her version of events, but to work so hard to debunk and go against the story. Now, I believe, as do you, that Joe Biden and all people accused of sexual assault, assault deserve yes. due process. That is important not just for alleged perpetrators, but also for alleged victims. That's, Im that's a very important thing. The media seem to see the importance of that in Joe Biden's case, but they never saw that and did so much in the opposite extreme with Brett Kavanaugh. They're such liars. They're such water carriers for the Democratic Party. They're not even ideologues. They're too dumb to have ideas. They just take their little orders, the Jeff Zucker.